Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and ladies and gentlemen, I've been waiting, what, about two months for this, and we're finally getting it. This is the review of Max Original DC's The Penguin, which is an extension of of the Batman film, which starred Robert Pattinson and uh, directed by the great Matt Reeves. And this show blew my mind on how amazing it is. This is an amazing show. Um, There's no point. (laughs) There's no point cutting corners and leading you on or you know, trying to tiptoe around it. This show was phenomenal. HBO Max, whatever they're called today, they they continue their excellence in television. This goes back to Sopranos and The Wire and Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. The list goes on and on and on when it comes to television series that come on HBO and Max. It, it's it's phenomenal television phenomenal and it didn't stop here the penguin is set in the world of gotham city that we all know from the comics from batman comics and we know the character of the penguin you know with the monocle and the top hat and the cigarette and the umbrellas and you know giving batman hell but we're more grounded it, it, especially coming from the 2022 film the batman it's very grounded in reality it, it's about close to reality you can get when a man dressing around a, <laughs> dressing up as a bat hopping around a city fighting crime but this is uh such an interesting approach to that property batman being my favorite comic book character uh, from a kid and onward, I, I was a big fan of the movie. I felt that the movie was probably the best on-screen depiction of Batman that we've ever gotten. You know, as far as the accuracy of the comic book and whatnot, it was more of a detective soul show. It wasn't just punchy, punchy, smashy, smashy. It was more cerebral than that, and I I loved it for that. It, reminded me of the animated series from the 90s is and you know that's basically what that was you know it wasn't just a a saturday morning cartoon or whatever that was just there to please children actually that show was more adult than 99 percent of the other programming that was on around that time Uh, but uh Yes, the movie was great. So when they made the announcement that they're going to do kind of a spinoff or a continuation of the movie and be centered around the Penguin, I was like, okay, because I love the character in the movie played by Colin Farrell, who returns to reprise the role in this show. I was all in on that because Colin Farrell is one of the best actors working today. Uh, he dives into every role that he's in, and he dove headfirst into this one to the point nobody knew that was Colin Farrell at first. <laughs> nobody knew. I was shocked to learn that my wife didn't know it even when we started watching the show. The, the first episode, and she was like, oh, that was that's Colin Farrell? So yeah, it was Colin Farrell in the movie, and she, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's Colin Farrell. Uh, under all that prosthetic but the show the show um is is basically the rise of oswald cobb not cobble pot in the comic books but cobb and his rise to become the king of the criminal underworld of gotham and this, this is what these eight episodes were based on and man you talk about a show all eight episodes were top-notch television. Beautifully written, beautifully acted. I think this is clearly the best show to come out in 2024. I know Agatha all along was giving it a run for his money, 
for a minute, but those the last it didn't end well. The plane landed, but there was a little turbulence before it hit the runway with Agatha all along. With me, I know a lot of people enjoyed it, it, it and it was enjoyable, but it, it was a little rough landing. This was a smooth, smooth landing with this show. The takeoff was good. The ride was good going through the clouds. And we came down smooth like a feather on a pillow. And this review is a non-biased review. Yes, I'm a huge Batman fan. Yes, I'm a huge The Batman fan <laughs> from 2022. But I, I'm giving an honest opinion, an honest assessment of this show. This show was phenomenal. Everything about it. I, if it was bad, I would say it was bad. I was actually going into this show. I was nervous. I was scared <laughs> because I didn't believe they could pull this off with this character. And we're doing a quote unquote Batman show without Batman. And how are we going to tell this story? How are they going to run around Gotham city organizing this crime syndicate and not have Batman incorporated in it. And I was waiting for that moment. And it was, you know, at moments it was getting to the point like, okay, at, at some point, at least Jim Gordon got to show up or something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it's stuff like that. But once the show goes on and it starts telling the story and you understand where they at and what they're doing and how Gotham city is set up, you know, uh, infrastructure wise, you get why you get why Batman wouldn't be there or making his presence felt around this time. Cause we know that, uh, from the film, from the 2022 film, that this Batman is more cerebral. He's, he's more of a detective. He gets his ducks in a row before he acts. And so it, in that regard, yeah, he wouldn't just pop up. So it makes sense. Um, Colin Farrell is great, but he wasn't the only one in this show. Starring alongside Colin Farrell, you had Kristen Miliani, uh, Razin, Rahin, Rahin, Rahenzi Felix, I got it right, uh, Deandra O'Connell, Clancy Brown, Carmen Ijago, uh, 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 Michael Kelly, and Mark Strong, just to name a few. Mark Strong was taken over for John Totero in the role of Carmine uh, Falcone, and he did a great job, you know, replacing John Totero. I think it was only for one episode, maybe two, uh, but he, uh, he filled the shoes fairly well. Uh, but starting off with the acting before we break, uh, go through the episodes, Colin Farrell, as good as he was in the film, even better in this show. In the show, <laughs> Oswald has the filter off. You know, with the film, is PG-13. Really can't get loose. <laughs> you know, really can't show how uh, uh, evil of a character he is, how uh, uh, vulgar of a character he is, or everybody in that regard. Uh, but in the TV show, you can let loose, and he let loose. Boy, it, it, and it was a beautiful thing to watch. Colin Farrell's depiction of this character is so despicable. Um, at moments, it's only moments throughout the show, all episodes total, maybe three moments where you found yourself kind of feeling sorry for Oz, that you was kind of cheering for Oz, hoping that he gets through this, that he gets himself out of these situations, that he uh, comes out on top at the end. But just when you start feeling that way, he shows you how much of a monster he is, how much of an evil individual he can be. And I love the show for that because at the end of the day, this is a villain. This is a villain to be technical. Everybody in this show was a villain. There was not one hero 
in this show. Not one. Everybody's a villain. <laughs> Everybody. There is nobody to cheer for. Normally, that is the kiss of death when it comes to film and television. You need to have somebody to cheer for in order to uh, connect to these characters. But this show found the way that you can connect to all of these characters, even though they are vile, despicable beings. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy. And when we get to the last episode, I guess the crescendo of everything that's to, that has taken place, it's earned. Everybody gets their comeuppings to a degree. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to a degree. Very heartbreaking. I mean, very. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, let me tell you, I'm shooken up by that last episode. It is so soul crushing what happened. Uh, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Colin Farrell, give him his Emmy now. There's no point holding the ceremony. Give him his Emmy now. And when you pass his to him, pass Christian Miliani's hers. Actually, give it to her first because she stole this show as Sophia Falcone or uh, Giuliani, uh, who she later uh, names herself. It, it, <laughs> didn't know it was didn't know she had it in her. I've seen her in a few things and enjoyed her in all, everything she's been in. Uh, uh, Palm Springs was in, incredible. Loved her in that movie. I uh, loved her in uh, Made for Love, the little short-lived TV show that was that was on Max. Uh, she was great in that. There's another show on Peacock that she was on that I I enjoyed her on. Oh Lord, the name's escaping me, but it, it, I think it came out last year, maybe. Uh, but she was great in that. She's great. She is an a great actress. But I didn't know she was this great. <laughs> I didn't know it was levels to greatness. But she is top tier her performance in this show was so good it was i mean it's everything you can these this is the type of performance that you would normally see meryl streep perform i, I mean i'm and i'm not speaking in hyperbole here i mean serious i've never seen a performance like this i, I honestly she went from this innocent human being. Well, when we first introduced to her, she's already this menacing figure. But when we get to episode five, it is soul crushing that she started off as an innocent person, innocent person, uh, not like everybody else on the show. Uh, th this is the one character you can cheer for because she was literally made to be the way she is. She was turned into what she became. And it's heartbreaking what she went through. And that episode showed it from beginning to end how she broke every stage that she broke in. It, it was, oh my God, her performance, people. Uh, throughout the show, every episode, you know, those, those, those eyes, her her ability, and she's a small woman. And if you know Sophia uh, Falcone in the comics, this is a big hawking woman. You know, this is a big woman in the comics. You know, very menacing. The Hangman. Well, she wasn't the Hangman in the comics. Actually, it was Alberto Falcone that was the Hangman in the comics. But whatever. We we, we did a little switcheroos and all this here. But that's fine. I didn't care because uh, <laughs> I like the story they were telling here. Uh, but uh, technically, she wasn't the hangman. She, uh, actually, it was Cal, uh, uh, Cal Mon, uh, the, the other Falcon, the dad. Can't get his name out. Anyway, yeah, he, he was the hangman. But they pent it all on her. She had to go to Arkham. She was in Arkham for years and uh, went through all this torture. And Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, she was having this psychotic break, and she eventually broke. And... Man, the transition for this character, when she went full 
Pharaoh and just wiped out the entire Falcon family in that house. It was so cold. It was cold blooded. <laughs> it was cold blooded. Uh, but she did that, man. Um, Rahenzi Felix as Victor. Um, I was a little hesitant with this addition to the show. Cause I'm like, why, why we got to give everybody a sidekick? You know, I, I just didn't like the sidekick element, you know, going into the show. I mean, the penguin's the penguin. He doesn't need a sidekick. And that's virtually what Victor is. He was the Robin to his Batman. <laughs> and I just, I wasn't with it until I pressed play on the show. <laughs> and I love this guy's performance. I've seen him before in uh, The Runaways. Uh, that Marvel show wasn't the biggest fan of that show, but I liked him in it. I liked virtually all the kids that was in that show, but he, he was pretty good, but I hadn't seen him in nothing else pops up in this. And oh, once again, great performance, great performance also had a story. Uh, uh, pausing for a minute, just to sum it up. Everybody here has an excellent story excellent origin story and it's told so well and it's not told in a way that it deviates from the main storyline that's going on everything connects in its weird strange way everything connects you still you're you're deeply invested in the story being told these backstories these flashbacks and stuff like that and it still connects to the main storyline you know you get those storylines in film or in television when they tell a backstory that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're watching and it takes you out of the movie a little bit or it takes you out of the show uh, but not here not here it is done so well and it didn't eat up time it didn't it wasn't like filler episodes that they did it with it no it everything fit perfectly and Victor's was great. He also a heartbreaking story, how he lost his whole family and how, uh, you know, he, he latched on to the penguin. He latched on to Oz and looked at Oz as family and man crushing at the end, uh, at the final episode is it, look, this is spoiler. So it's no shock uh, when Oz killed him. You, I kind of seen it coming. Kind of, but I was holding on to hope that Oz wouldn't kill him, that Oz would keep him alive. But then I thought about it. This character does not exist in any Batman comic book. <laughs> and so then when, when that when that realization came to my head, I said, he's going to kill him. There is no way he's going to survive. Everybody else in this show exist in the comics except him i say well he's he's gonna die uh, but the way it the way it went down was oh man and it was soul crushing soul crushing i i really you know when you about to cry and you kind of like moving in your chair to kind of reposition yourself maybe that'll stop the tears from coming <laughs> that's that's what i was doing <laughs> during that scene i was like oh no, and 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 at this point, you know, Oz is completely evil. You know he doesn't care. He doesn't care about nobody or nothing. Yet and still, I was holding on to hope, and it just <laughs> my hope was dashed away in a minute. It, it was it was oh man, heartbreaking. But the performance was amazing. Another great performance who also deserves an Emmy is Deirdre O'Connell as Francis Cobb, uh, Oz's mother. Wow. Uh, that's all I could say. Wow. Uh, powerful, powerful, powerful performance uh, by Deirdre O'Connell. I, I mean, I'm getting chills now thinking about it. I, I don't even know what to say. It, it is, is that great? I'm telling you, if you have not watched this show, Oh, it's just another superhero show. No, no. Watch this show. If you love 
uh, Sopranos and Breaking Bad and um, what's another one that comes to mind? Uh, heck, The Wire. I'm not saying it's as good as The Wire, but I'm just trying to say it in that tone. This is the show. It's not superhero. It's not comic booky. This is not a Marvel show. Trust me. <laughs> this is not that. This is gritty, violent, and all the good stuff that we love <laughs> from this type of show. Um, Yeah, I, I am super impressed with it. Uh, My favorite episodes, I mentioned the one with Sophia. Uh, that was episode four. Uh, her flashback to tell her story on how she became the quote unquote hangman. Uh, that was just a soul crushing episode because of, uh, you know, they basically made her and how her family betrayed her and turned her into this killing machine, basically, you know, <laughs> but, uh, the, that was my that was one of my favorites the other one would have to be the last one the final episode a great and little thing uh episode eight great episode oh another acting performance i wanted to mention is the young man who played the young oz uh i had his name and i lost it but anyway that the young actor who played the young oz great he did awesome i love i loved how he, I believe that that was the young eyes, you know, it's like he was a, a mini Colin Farrell in, in prosthetics. Uh, great, man. I mean, where did they find this kid? I mean, with the speech pattern and the way he carries himself, I mean, everything. He emulated Colin Farrell's performance to a T. Didn't miss a beat did not miss a beat it was awesome great job by all of the showrunners all of the writers all of the actors the set the designs was uh, great it felt like gotham it felt dirty and gritty just like it was set up in the movie uh i mean i have no complaints zero complaints and i honest to god was trying to find one so it wouldn't seem like I'm being biased, but I, I honestly can't find one. All eight episodes slapped, as the young kids would say. I, I I loved it. I loved it. And I don't I doubt they do a season two. It's really unnecessary to do a season two, but if they do, cool. But according to Matt Reeves, who is uh currently preparing to do the Batman two with Robert Pattinson his thought process or his his uh plans is that the penguin show once it ends we go right into batman 2 now how this show ended the penguin is now on top he is the king of the underworld of the criminal underworld in gotham got everything he wanted his mother uh even though she's in a vegetated state now she is sitting in the penthouse like she asked for looking out the window. He's dancing with a prostitute dressed up like his mother, um, <laughs> which is the creepiest. <laughs> it's the creep. That was the creepiest thing in the entire show. <laughs> I was like, that's the moment where I almost lost it. I was like, what is going on right now? <laughs> But in any event, you had that, and then uh, as they're dancing, the camera pans out of the window. We get a sweeping shot of the Gotham skyline at night, and the bat signal comes on, and it fades to black. And so that's how the show ended. What does that mean? Does that mean that the Penguin will be the main villain in the Batman 2? Or uh, are we setting up for something else? I don't know. I don't know. I thought for a moment there they were setting up the Court of Owls. I, th I thought that's what they were doing when they had got that little coalition together of all the mob bosses and all this here. Uh, but uh, apparently that ain't happening because uh, <laughs> all of the underlings killed all the bosses. And that's how 
uh, Oswald became the creme de la creme. And so, uh, yeah, I guess he's going to be the main baddie in the Batman 2. And I'm not mad. I'm not mad at it. Uh, in Matt Reeves, I trust. The Penguin, which all eight episodes are now available on Max, gets a letter grade of an A+. Plus. Excellent television, people. Excellent television. And if you haven't watched the show, I'm jealous of you if you decide to go back and watch it because you get to binge. You get to watch them all back to back to back. And I plan to go back and watch them all like that, too, to see if it's uh, just as exciting um, watching it binge style as opposed to week to week. But I did enjoy it in that fashion. You know, it, it grew anticipation every Sunday, you know, <laughs> to watch it. Um, but I would love to know, what did you think of the pink one? It, it, is this, is this a real good adaptation of a DC it, it, and DC needed this DC needed this just like Marvel needed Agatha all along DC needed this. And this is a huge win for that company. I, I think, um, I wouldn't go crazy cause I, I read reports where they're discussing more spinoff shows from uh Batman villains in the future. Ah, uh, <laughs> you know, set in this world. I mean, where where else? What else would you do? Uh, uh, the Riddler. You know, his exploits in Arkham or something like that. The Joker. I I would like to see a Joker show, but it'll have to be some time. I, I'll say some. You know four or five years from now, you know, we got to get the, the uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker out of our head, you know, and not to say this bad because I'm one of the five people that actually enjoyed Joker too, but I know a vast majority didn't and <laughs> they want to get that taste out of their mouth. And so it'll be years before that. I don't know if they should run and jump and do another one, but of course that being said, I questioned it when they, announced they were doing this show and look how it turned out so i i'm just gonna sit back and enjoy the show <laughs> whatever they decide to do but i am super looking forward to the batman too but i would love to know your thoughts moving forward and what did you think of the show email the show kb radio podcast at gmail.com you can also search on all social media platforms the kb radio network you can leave comments there as well don't forget about YouTube. Subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel and like this video. Don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. Everybody, thank you for joining me for this review of the first season, the only season, the limited season review of the Penguin. Now I got to figure out what to do on my Sunday evening, but I want you all to know that I love you. Continue to love everyone. And until we speak again, you all be blessed.